Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I would like to wish uh, Matthew and Shana Ray a happy 28th wedding anniversary this afternoon today. Pursuant to Section 84-1411 of the Nebraska Statutes, notice of this meeting was given on December 29, 2020. The meeting will convene at 6.30 p.m., and visitors may obtain a request to be heard from staff or for any presentation they may have for the meeting. In accordance with policy, the request to be heard forms must be submitted to the secretary within the first five minutes of the board meeting in order to be heard at this meeting. Agenda items are subject to reordering at the discretion of the board president. Please attend the entire meeting to assure you're able to hear any discussion.
Pursuant to section 84-1411 of the Nebraska statutes, the next regular board meeting of the Board of Education of Douglas County School District 0001 and the Board of Educational Service Unit number 19 will be held on Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday, January 21st, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in the board meeting room of the Teacher Administrative Center at 3215 Cumming Street. The agenda will be kept current and available for public inspection in the office of the Secretary of the Board of Education at the administrative building during regular working hours. Pursuant to section 84-1412 of the Nebraska statutes, the public is hereby informed that a current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is posted in the board meeting room on the north wall. Roll call, Mr. Ray. Smith. Here. Snipes. Present. Snow. Here. Thielen. Here. Cassidy. Here. Erdenberger. Here. Head. Present. Holman. Present. Cracky. Eight present. Thank you, Mr. Wright. <clears throat> Moving on to board and superintendent communications. Sounds correct. Starting off with Superintendent Dr. Logan. Thank you. Good evening, President Snow, Vice President Holman, members of the Board of Education, those here in attendance and those watching the stream at home. We welcome our new board members this evening, uh, Ms. 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 Jane Erdenberger, Mr. Nick Thielen, and Mr. Spencer Head. Oh. And we're looking forward to your service. Well, welcome back to everyone. I do hope each of you took advantage of some much deserved downtime during the winter break. We are pleased to welcome a new calendar year. We're also delighted to extend a warm welcome to our newest members of the board. Ms. Jane Erdenberger comes to us after having spent more than 18 years teaching high school social studies while raising two daughters, and I believe was a lawyer and somewhere in between, uh, who are both, and still is, and who are both Central High School alumni. That is her two daughters, so welcome. Ms. Erdenberg, I know her husband is here in attendance with her today, I think, as well as some friends. Mr. Nick Thielen is an attorney and the father of an OPS kindergartner at Dundee Elementary School. I'm assuming they're watching the stream. He has volunteered for several organizations that promote childhood well-being and has served on the Foster Care Review Board. Welcome, Mr. Thielen. And also, Mr. Not last, but certainly not least, Mr. Spencer Head comes to us after having served as a policy advisor for the Speaker of the Nebraska State Legislature and as a community outreach liaison to the education and medical communities. He's also, his family is also in attendance. His wife is a speech language pathologist here in the Omaha Public Schools and his two lovely little children that make me tired uh, thinking about their bedtime, see you soon. Uh, we welcome you as well and thank you for your family for coming and hi, thank you for waving. Um, we thank, uh, thank each of you in advance for your commitment to the more than 53,000 students we serve daily and 9,000 employees. We, we are eager to begin working with you to ensure all of our students are on their best path forward to succeed in college, career, and life. Tomorrow starts the spring semester. Tomorrow morning, we welcome our students back into virtual classrooms as we transition from the winter break. Most students will begin the new year learning remotely. Students at JP Lord do return in person tomorrow. On Monday, January 11th, students in several programs like alternative curriculum and other programs return in person. And on Friday the 15th, we will not have class to allow professional learning time for our teachers. On Monday, January 18th, we observe the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Classes will not be in session, and we look forward to welcoming everybody back on January 19th in our Family 3-2 model. As a final reminder to all of our teachers, families, and students, and community members, please submit your nominations for the Alice Buffett Outstanding Teacher Award by next Friday, January 15th, 2021. This award is your opportunity to recognize a teacher who has gone above and beyond. Given to 15 teachers annually, the award has recognized and rewarded more than 300 teachers throughout the past two decades. An Omaha Public Schools teacher or counselor, pre-K through 12, with a minimum of two years experience is eligible for the nomination. And we also are looking forward to hopefully resuming the in-person celebrations where we also get to meet Mr. Buffett. As the deadline approaches, we look forward to the final round of nominations. Kindergarten Roundup is coming up. If you have a child or children entering kindergarten for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year, 
that we hope looks as much like normal as we can remember. Students who turn five years old on or before J July 31st, 2021 can enter kindergarten next fall. Soon families will have ac access to the form via our website, OPS.org. Middle school virtual open houses will take place beginning tomorrow through January 21st. Welcome videos and official virtual presentation schedules can be found at OPS.org. We look forward to sharing more about our program offerings at each of our middle schools. In closing, we want our families to know that as our local and national leaders proceed with the vaccination rollout, our leadership team remains engaged in ongoing discussions about our short and long-term academic recovery plans. This, these, these conversations begin this week. Our students have faced a number of academic challenges in the midst of the disruption caused by the virus and recovery plans are forthcoming. We will share more information about upcoming plans with our board and our families in the months to come. This concludes my remarks for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Logan. I jumped around on the agenda here um, just for everyone's awareness. Um, we're going to go back up to the top of the agenda. Um, and before we begin the Board of Education oath of office for our newest board members, first of all, welcome. Um, this is my last meeting as board president. Um, you know, I get a little tear jerk, or, you know, uh, being on the board for the last eight years. Um, uh, we've gone through a lot of uh, different adversity, and we are stronger today than we were eight years ago. And we will always continue to be stronger and build upon that success. And tonight's oath of office with our new members starts that process, as well as our officer elections, which happens right after that. So um, all of you... All three of you have your oath of office. And I will start with you all. And if you can all just read together the oath of office and you just enter your name. Um, once we get done with that, we'll come up to the front with your family uh, and significant others. And we can take some pictures, we'll take a break, and then we'll start the process for board officer elections. Um, any questions? All righty, so all together, put your mics on. Begin. I, I Nick Jane Tewin, Erdenberger, do solemnly, do solemnly swear that I, that I will support, support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Nebraska against, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, to the same. That, I that I take this obligation freely and without, and without mental reservation or for, or for the purpose of evasion. Of evasion. And, and that, that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of the office of a member of the Board of, board of, board of Education according to law and to the best, to the best of my ability. And I do, do further swear that, that I do not advocate, nor am I a member of any political party or organization that advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States or of this state by force or violence. And that during, that during such time as I am in this position, I will not advocate nor become a member of any political party or organization that advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States or of the state by force or violence. So help me God. Thank you so much and welcome to the Omaha Public School Board. Thank you. We can take a five minute break um, to have some photos with you and your significant others. I know some of your uh, spouses have come tonight to take these photos. Also, I'm available for photos with you and your family as well. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll reconvene at uh, 652. No, 648, sorry, apologize. Spencer, you wanna go first so your wife can leave? <laughs> you don't have to, but I'm just thinking. I know there's a short. In front of Mark?
That's a lot. I saw her, e I didn't get in, so I don't think they were sending them to us yet. Alrighty, well, let's move to our next item, which is officer elections. And let me make sure I have... All right, it's officer elections. Um, I don't have the guidelines for the officer elections written. Don't we have to nominate somebody? We oh, do. Nominate oh, right here, here we go. Sorry. <clears throat> the Board of Education shall elect its president and then its vice president. Uh, any member of the Board of Education may self-nominate or be nominated by another board member. Nominating speeches are not permitted. However, nominees shall have up to five minutes to speak following the close of the nominations and prior to the distribute uh, of ballots. Nominee speeches shall be in order of nomination. Election of officers of the Board of Education shall be kept by secret ballot. Uh, elections shall require a majority of members of the board. Um, this is policy 8130. And um, I will now open it up for president, uh, nominations for board president. And I will make that first nomination I would like to nominate Dr. Shavana Holman. Second. There's a second by Mr. Smith. Do you accept that nomination, Dr. Holman? I accept. All right. Thank you. Any other nominations for board president? Seeing none, Dr. Holman, would you like to give a speech? <laughs> Remarks? <laughs> Not a speech, but maybe a couple of words. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you all so much for your... Do we need to vote? Nominating. Okay. Just, okay. All right. Well, I, I think, appreciate you all for um, the nomination and, and hope that shall I be uh, voted in as your next board president that um, I continue to do just as good of a job as Mr. Snow has done here for the past two years and look forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ray? We'll pass out the secret ballots. And you don't have to fold your ballot up, you just lay it straight down. Mr. Ray is really easy at. Has everyone voted? 
Alrighty. And the vote hasn't occurred yet, selecting Dr. Holman, but Dr. Holman will be the first uh, board member of the new board members since 2013, outside the 2013 board members to become board president. So um, it's huge. <clears throat> since we redesigned the entire school board in 2012. <laughs> right. Holman. 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 And Holman. Nine Holman. Dr. Holman, you are the OPS board president. Thank you. Since Dr. Holman just was thrown into presidency, I will continue the officer elections. Uh, we will now open it up for vice president, Ms. Cracky. I'd like to nominate Jane Erdenberger. There's a nomination for Jane Erdenberger. Do you accept this nomination? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for vice president? I'd like to nominate Tracy Cassidy. Mr. Smith, Tracy, would you accept this nomination? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I would. Are there any other nominations for vice president? Okay. Jane, you have five minutes. And then Tracy, you have five minutes. Hopefully Begin, Jane. Hopefully it won't take five minutes. I am, of course, honored and appreciative of being nominated for this position and just a little bit surprised, as I'm sure are most of you. Um, I recognize that I'm brand new to the board, but uh, I know that I am qualified to serve in this position and I bring a skill set to the position that is not better, but different from the skill set that's being brought by Ms. Cassidy. So it's, it's up to you guys to decide what, wh where we're going with this. Um, when I was a teacher, I had a t-shirt that I hung up on the wall that said, if I'm talking, you should be taking notes. So uh, if anybody feels like taking notes, I'm about to tell you the four elements of my skill set that I want you to take into consideration, please. Um, one is that I am a zealously overprepared person at all times. Matt has already heard from me about the fact that I have read the complete policy book and have some suggestions and edits and corrections. So I am prepared to move forward in this position. Um, another element of my skill set is my deep understanding of the district. I've had st my daughters, as um, Dr. Logan referenced, were students in uh, the OPS. And so ever since 1991, I've either been a parent or a teacher in the school system. As a parent, I was an active parent. As a teacher, I was an active teacher, both at the district level and with, as you may know, the, the teachers union. So this is a, a depth of experience that I have that the fact that I'm new to the board might not otherwise reflect. Also, before I taught, I was a lawyer for 22 years and I did bond law, uh, issuing tax exempt bonds to finance housing and roads and the like. So again, I'm bringing a skill set that's different. Um, the other thing that I am bringing is I'm retired. And this is, I'm prepared to have this be a full-time job for me. And those of you that know me when I was a lawyer or when I was a teacher know that when I say full-time job, or if you're my husband, you know that full-time job really means full-time. And last but not least, I'm an advocate for public education, as are we all. And I'm super excited about bringing those elements of my skill set to the table to advocate for our students. We have, uh, as Bob Cutack used to say, 
Um, every challenge is an opportunity for greatness. And we clearly have lots of opportunities for greatness in front of us right now. Um, I have lived in Omaha my whole life, so in addition to um, being able to recognize our opportunities for greatness, I also know the depth of our community partner support. Um, one of our primary community supporters uh, was a fellow kindergarten Sunday school student with me. So I go way back with a lot of people here in Omaha. So like I said, I'm surprised, I'm honored. Thank you very much, Nancy, for your vote of confidence. And um, excited about the opportunity to serve. I think I would do a great job. I'm pretty sure Tracy would too. So you guys get to decide what skill sets work best at this critical time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Cassidy. I guess that means I'm up. Well, you're a tough act to follow. That was a nice speech. Oh. Um, I am also a little bit surprised, so thank you for the nomination, and I do um, humbly accept it. I think that um, I'm not going to go through my entire background, but obviously I was appointed to this board, oh gosh, I guess it was three and a half years ago. Um, I've learned a lot while being on this board, but I also am very, very excited for the future. Um, it's great to look out here and look at our new board members, and it really invigorates me not only for a new year, because obviously we're all maybe have our resolutions and have our goals for the 2021, and we all hope to just get to a different place and a better place than we are now, and I have that same hope for this board. And if I am able to serve alongside Dr. Holman, um, who I do work very well with, and, and, and I um, would be honored to assist her and help her in any way that I can, um, but, but if I am able to help Dr. Holman, I do hope that we will be able to continue the growth that we have already accomplished. We've done so much since just I've been on this board. And I know it may feel lately that we're feeling stuck in our current state with um, dealing with the pandemic. But like I said, I'm very hopeful for the future and I wanna be a big part of that change. And being a board officer would um, be a good step in the right direction, I think, for me. Um, I want to be able to progress more um, with my board duties, and this would be a natural um, progression of those board duties. Um, that's about it. I'm just very honored and humbled to have been nominated and hope that my experience that I've already brought to the table these past three and a half years will give some of you the confidence to um, have me serve as your board vice president. Thank you. Thank you both for um, putting your name out there to be our vice president for the school board. Uh, it is uh, an honor to have people submit their name for that, um, and it is not an easy role. Mr. Ray will pass out the, the cards uh, for board members to select one person for vice president. We have Jane Erdberger, and we have Tracy Cassidy. <clears throat> board members are still voting. Ohio State is in the national championship. So just for everyone to know. Cassidy, Erdenberger, Cassidy, Erdenberger, Erdenberger, Cassidy, Erdenberger, Erdenberger, Cassidy. All righty, I believe that is Jane Erdenberger as OPS Vice President. Is that correct, Mr. Ray? That's correct. Welcome to the OPS School Board Vice Presidency.
So we're going to reconvene. I know everyone's getting mad at me pushing this back, but I, I really want to do this. Jane, you're going to have to move to this seat, and then I'll move to that seat over there, just for tonight, Nancy. I know you want to be next to her. And uh, Dr. Holman will continue tonight's meeting. Yes? We were in person at the last meeting when our other school board members exited. Uh-huh. And I wish I had been there to thank them and wish them well. And I enjoyed working with them. And I, Amanda made a comment. We sat by each other. And during some long meetings we exchanged, I kept giving her Tic Tacs. We had to do something to get through the meetings because they were so long and so many speakers. So we, we formed a relationship on Tic Tacs. So I, I enjoyed that. And I got to know her a lot better, too. When you come on, you don't know people. But knowing people is working together. And that's what makes it work. And that's so important. So I'm looking forward so much to our board. And we don't have those other extraneous things now. And we can work on the goals of educating our children. So I'm excited about it. I can't wait to get started. I'm really enthusiastic and that's good because enthusiasm was waning at that time and I'm just all fired up here so well said Mrs. Cracky well said go OPS board <laughs> <laughs> all right we're going to reconvene in two minutes at 705 we're just going to switch roles real quick and uh, Dr. Holman will continue tonight's meeting again uh, this is awesome thank you so much <clears throat> Okay, we're going to go ahead and reconvene the meeting. Um, moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance. I know it seems kind of weird that we're just now doing the pledge, but we are out of order for today's meeting. So we're going to go ahead and do the pledge right now.
Okay, and in my first official capacity, I'll read the vision for OPS, which is every student every day, every day prepared, prepared for success. success. And the mission is to prepare all students, students for success in college, college career, career, and life. life. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, board members' communications. Does anyone have anything to share? Ms. Snipes? I just wanted to say welcome to the new board members. Um, it wasn't that long ago. I was going to say Nancy and I, but she had actually had some previous work in prior to myself. So um, a lot of people might say that this is a... Uh, crazy sort of intimidating time for you to come as a new board member. Um, I will say, as someone who was here pre and post COVID, that um, I say you came at the right time. I think the level of engagement is high. I was just talking to, I think, Spencer about that earlier tonight and that I hate that it took a pandemic for that to happen. But um, I think that you're here at a right time when we have to make important decisions, when we're thinking about our babies, even whether we have children in school or not, we all have a vested interest in OPS period. So um, I just wanna say welcome. I'm Jane's mentor. Uh, the new board members have mentors. I say take advantage of us as much as you can. Um, I know how to say no, <laughs> just kidding, I wouldn't. But um, I just wanna say welcome and that I think that uh, I know that you know you're here because you care. So for that, I think that you will definitely enjoy your time. Thank you, Ms. Snipes. Any other, Ms. Cracky? I can be here on dates, 1994. <laughs> you know, long time. It isn't fun to tell somebody you're the oldest person on the board. You're supposed to say the most experienced, I guess. Absolutely. And there is something else if you wanted us to comment tonight. Um, I've received many, many, many of the cards of Save Our Snow Day. And if anyone was listening at the last meeting and recalling what I said, I said that I really did always like that. And I probably took home all the lesson plan stuff to work on the next day. Because usually I used to do the work day, but it was at home. And with the snow being as deep as it was and uh, things weren't plowed in our district, et cetera, at the buildings at that time, you know, there's just a lot of reasons. It was just very nice to stay home and maybe go back to bed after they called you at six o'clock, get up later and, and use the day that way. Um, it, well, I also was in a situation where we were expected to attend and go to school if at all possible and work in our room. But you know what? You had better concentration at home working because in your room, everybody sort of came by your room and there was a lot of a lot of conversation that went on and I think you got more done by yourself at home. So I'm, I'm all for it. So please don't send me any more of the cards. When you send one or two, that's enough, but otherwise you're wasting postage. So save your stamps. Thank you. Any other board member comments? Mr. Smith. Um, welcome to the new board members and welcome back everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I want to thank all the educators um, who do the hard work that we um, so necessarily need and, uh, and our kids need. Let's continue to push education forward. Congratulations, Dr. Holman and Jane. Um, I know you guys will do a great job. Um, I'm looking forward to working the next couple of years with you guys to, again, continue to move education in the right direction. Also want to thank um, the people who work behind the scenes for the district, so everybody who's doing all the sanitizing and those kind of things and working and making sure our buildings and our kids are safe. Um, I appreciate you as transportation as well. So I just wanna say um, Happy New Year and welcome back everybody and, and make sure that I say thank you. Any other comments? Great, thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is public comment. We have one public comment for tonight 
Masks are required to be worn in order to speak during public comment. If you are not wearing a mask, a mask will be provided to you at the podium to wear while speaking. The board has adopted policy 8346, which provides public comment for a period of one hour. That same policy limits individual speakers to a maximum of five minutes. We ask that you respect the time limit. Mr. Ray will let you know when you have one minute remaining and, you will have th and when you have 30 seconds remaining. If you are in need of an interpreter, please let Mr. Ray know and one will be provided for you. We understand that people have strong feelings about the issues they come to speak about. We ask that you respect the opinions of all who speak and that you refrain from applause or other outbursts during the presentations. If the subject of your public comment is related to a particular student or staff member, we ask that you not mention the student or staff member by name and instead provide that information to Mr. Ray. He will assist us in looking into those types of specifics for you. If you do not get an opportunity to speak and would like to submit any written commentary, please provide it to Mr. Ray. He will make sure each member of the board gets a copy. As a reminder, we ask that you please spell your name and state your address before you begin your public comment. It is now 7.13 p.m. and our first and only speaker of tonight is Matthew Aubrey. Matthew Aubrey, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-A-U-B-R-Y, 4755 Douglas Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68132. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to the board. A recent article by McKinsey and Company, a private, public, and social sector management consultant firm notes that formative assessments from the fall of 2020 already found that students learned only 67% of the math and 87% of reading that would have been accomplished in a normal year as a result of the school shutdowns in the spring. It further predicts that by June 2021, the result of school shut, excuse me, the students on average could lose five to nine months of learning, and students of color could be six to 12 months behind. Unfortunately, the losses probably won't stop there, as it also predicts learning losses will likely to, will continue to compound over time. An October presentation by the World Health Organization notes, disruption to instru instructional time can affect a child's ability to learn. The longer marginalized children are out of school, the less likely they are to return. Closures disrupt school-based services such as immunization, school meals, mental health, and psychosocial support, and can cause anxiety due to loss of peer interaction and disrupted routines. Being out of school increases the risk of teenage pregnancy, sexual exploitation, child marriage, violence, and other threats. Harms are greater for children of migrants, refugees, minorities, and children living with disabilities. Keeping children home at home also affects the ability of parents to work, introducing other risks. Dr. Anthony Fauci, our nation's top infectious disease expert, was quoted in November saying, the default position should be to try as best as possible within reason to keep children in school or get them back to school. Additionally, he said that schools largely haven't been the drivers of community spread of the virus. Finally, there's a growing body of evidence that suggests in-person schooling with proper precautions can be accomplished safely. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention notes, the best available evidence from countries that have reopened schools indicates that COVID-19 poses low risk to school-aged children, at least in areas with low community transmission. Of course, it would be hard for me to argue that we currently have low community transmission in Omaha at this time. However, the Nature Research Journal in October discovered even in places where the community infections were on the rise, outbreaks in schools were uncommon, particularly when precautions were taking place to re reduce transmission. More than 65,000 schools in Italy opened, reopened in September as the case numbers were climbing in the community. But only 1,212 campuses, which is less than 2%, had experienced outbreaks four weeks later. In 93% of those cases, only one infection was reported, and only one high school had a cluster of more than 10 people infected. It is for these and many other social and economic reasons that OPS must create an aggressive plan to return to full-time in-person learning as quickly as possible. I understand it is very early in the vaccination distribution process, but I'm asking that the school district's metrics for returning to full-time in-person learning include some consideration to the status of vaccinated teachers and staff. With little threat for student-to-student -student transmission of COVID-19, especially in elementary age children and staff that have had access to the vaccine, the benefit of remote or hybrid learning options will be heavily outweighed by the benefits of returning to in-person learning. However, simply getting students back in the classroom won't be enough. I'm asking that the district give consideration to expanding the availability of summer school attendance during the summer of 2021. Other options could include an aggressive tutoring program, extended school days, structured after-school programs, or weekend schooling options. 
Our students deserve the opportunity to begin to make up for lost time, especially when compared to the students at school districts who will be enjoying a competitive, a competitive advantage over OPS students who are subjected to much less in-school learning. In closing, while I do applaud the school system for the aggressive stake, uh, steps taken during the summer to arm each student with a mobile device, the effort doesn't stop there. The efforts at the tail end of this pandemic in terms of human capital could be no less aggress aggressive with not a day wasted. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to address the Thank board. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Aubrey. Now moving on to the consent agenda. I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda that is before us. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Motion by Mrs. Cassidy and seconded by Mrs. Snipes. Any abstentions? I do, Dr. Holman. Um, I need to extend, ex abstain, excuse me, from, um, it is J, J7, uh, report C, claim C, please. What was it again? Uh, claim C, item J7. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cassidy will be abstaining from claim J7. Roll call, Mr. Ray. Snipes. Aye. Snow. Aye. Teelan. Aye. Cassidy. Aye. Erdenberger. Aye. Head. Aye. Holman. Aye. Cracky. Aye. Smith. Aye. Nine. Aye. Okay, motion carry, sorry for the delay. And your patience as I'm working through this. Moving on to information items. We will have Mr. Scott Roberts come and present to us tonight. And he will be providing an update um, to the board and to the public on the steps taken to address the two internal control deficiencies cited in the 2019-2020 audit. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to address you this evening on our remediation efforts regarding the two internal control deficiencies cited with our 2020 audit. If I can get this, sorry. Do I just click on the presentation, Matt? Yes. Sorry about that, my fault. Do I have this right? Oh, you've got it down here. Sorry. Thank you. Once again, my apologies. Before getting into the details, I wanna cover a bit of background and some foundational information. First, when it comes to the audit, there's three level of deficiencies that can be cited. First is a control deficiency, and these are in the order of magnitude. Control deficiency followed by a significant deficiency, and the most severe is a material weakness. During the course of the review for the fiscal year 2020 audit, we had two findings from our auditor, Sime Johnson, two deficiencies noted. We had a material weakness over our capital asset reporting and a significant deficiency over our financial reporting. I'd like to take an opportunity to go into that in a little bit more detail on each of those issues. 
For the capital asset reporting, there were a number of asset additions that got hung up in a pending status between systems and didn't get properly recorded on our financial statements at the end of the year. This resulted in an understatement of fixed assets and related depreciation expense. Due to the materiality of the error, we were given a material weakness. Additionally, our fixed asset uh, accounting position had seen kind of a revolving door and had seen multiple turnovers over the last two and a half years, and that position was vacant at the end of the year. Also contributing to the finding were some system issues and ineffective oversight and review procedures that we should have had in place. Since the audit, we've taken some actions to remediate these issues. We have subsequently filled the fixed asset accounting position. That individual started with us today, comes with fixed asset accounting experience uh, from Mutual of Omaha Bank. We're very excited to have that position filled. Additionally, late summer, we hired an accounting manager, which is a new position that will oversee all the transactional reporting within the accounting department. So accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger accounting, as well as fixed assets. So having additional management oversight is, is really important. We've also started working with our IMS team to identify system issues and potential solutions. We will likely come back to the board at some period or some point in time in the near future to seek approval to bring Accenture back in. Accenture is the consultant we use for the implementation of the PeopleSoft system that we use. And we're going to need some help to diagnose the system issues. There's some known issues in PeopleSoft, um, but the consultant will help us identify those in more detail and provide some solutions to put in place. And then we've started reviewing and updating uh, policies, procedures, and training to ensure that the staff are, are properly trained and knowledgeable in the job that they're doing in this area. Additionally, we, we aren't done yet. Those are the items that we've taken care of so far but we will be looking at new monthly close processes, adding some analytical review procedures, and cross-training of staff to ensure that um, we don't have the same problem that we had this year. The fixed asset area is a staff of one. It, it doesn't warrant additional staff, but by cross-training some additional staff on the accounting team, uh, we will backstop any vacancies that exist going forward. Our second deficiency was a significant deficiency over financial reporting. As most of you are aware, we maintain our books on a cash basis per state requirements throughout the course of the year. At year end, we, we convert those financial results to accrual base and modified accrual basis. And those, those financials are then provided to the auditors. A number of adjustments and reclassifications were identified uh, by both our team and the auditors after those financial statements were presented. All major transactions and account reconciliations should take place prior to us giving those financials to the auditors. Last year, there were two major occurrences that pretty much prevented that from happening at the extent that it needed to. First, our payroll system interface crashed right at year end and that cost us about two weeks in closing the books. So the audit was delayed by two weeks, and most of you are aware that we're on a very aggressive timeline with our state reporting at year end, so that was a significant issue. We also had eight open accounting positions at year end, and that represents nearly 25% of our accounting staff. That hasn't happened before. It was kind of the perfect storm of turnover and retirements, and um, I'm proud to announce one of the remediations we've done is we've been able to fill seven of those eight positions, and we expect to fill the eighth position hopefully by the end of January. We've also identified high-risk areas for further review and analytics. There's a lot of activity, as you can imagine, between the funds and throughout the course of a year with the district our size. And so identifying those areas with high-risk transactions, high-volume transactions, and putting additional accounting resources at year end and throughout the course of the year in those areas will ensure that from a materiality perspective, we've caught everything that we need to. And also we've started reviewing the financial statement preparation process and procedures, and we're kind of augmenting and enhancing that so that we have a better solution by the end of this fiscal year. 
In addition to the steps that we've already taken, we are looking at enhancing our monthly close processes. When we convert our financials at year end from cash basis to accrual, it's kind of the big bang at the end of the year. We're spreading that out throughout the course of the year this year. So there will be a rigorous monthly and quarterly process that will ensure that we're tying out that activity throughout the course of the year. That will alleviate some of the time pressures we have at the end of the year, but it will also ensure that we're kind of reconciling as we go and not trying to digest an entire year's worth of activity at the same time. On the staff turnover piece, the open positions that we had, we are focusing on staff retention and training to ensure that we can cross train our staff and make sure there's advancement opportunities within the division. And then also implementing a risk management process that will focus on account accuracy and provide the timing necessary uh, for us to properly review the books at the end of the year. With that, that's the end of my uh, remarks. I would uh, take any questions that you may have. Thank any you, questions Robert. from board members? I just want to thank you, Mr. Roberts, for making yourself available when um, I reached out to ask questions. I just want to thank you for always doing that, as you do. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Mr. Roberts. We appreciate it. Okay, there's no receipt of reports. And Ms. Erdenberger, would you go ahead and close this out? I move that the Board of Education go into closed session for the protection of the public interest and for the prevention of needless inner injury to the reputation of injurable <laughs> individuals to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to board, and legal counsel real estate pending litigation and negotiations. Does it need a second? It has been moved by Mrs. Erdenberger and seconded by Mr. Smith that we move to close session. That's it. Roll call, Mr. Ray. Snow. Aye. Thielen. Aye. Cassidy. Aye. Erdenberger. Aye. Head. Aye. Holman. Aye. Cracky. Aye. Smith. Aye. Snipes. Aye. Nine aye. Motion carries, thank you.
Let the record reflect that the board came out of closed session at 8.06 p.m. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned.